Hey guys, I'm Ronella Hernandez with Web3 TV and I'm at the Blockdown Festival here in Portugal. Joining me here we have Emma Miller, the singer-songwriter behind the music NFTs Artifact. How are you today? Hello, I'm great, thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for joining me. I wanted to learn a little bit more about your work and what inspired the Artifacts NFT collection. Yeah, so I have been making music for the last several years and really suffered with the pandemic times. Um, so the songs within this collection are from from that period where I was in an existential crisis, wondering what to do with myself, not sure if I'd ever be making music again. And it just felt like their life should begin on the blockchain because there was this poetic justice in bringing these, these songs that might not have seen the light of day um, onto the blockchain and it's allowed me to do music full time as well, which has really come full circle. Wow, that's amazing. So how did that get started though? Like how did you find out that you were able to do this in the first place? So I was introduced to specifically music NFTs by Josh Savage, who is performing today. And he brought me to some Twitter spaces. So a lot of the music NFT culture lives on Twitter on their social audio platform, which is called Spaces. Um, and I began performing every single day, multiple times per day. I'd come up as a speaker, I got to know certain communities, and you would then very quickly be brought up on stage, and sometimes I'd be performing up to like 500, 1,000 people in one space. So you instantly had that um, interaction, a really special moment where for the first time, often, someone has not only heard you perform, but heard you speak as yourself. It's not like this Instagram highlights real world. Um, so that's how I cultivated my audience. More authentic, you mean? It's way more authentic, so much more authentic. Um, you don't have to even like get dressed. You can be in your home in your pajamas, like just me like on my piano performing. Um, and yeah, I started from there really, from Twitter spaces and, and releasing very small collections until they get into a larger collection. So how would you assess the market of music NFTs amid the greater NFT market? Yeah. So the, the NFT market is small within the crypto scene. Music NFTs are an even smaller niche within that. Um, but we have done remarkably well through this, this last year, through this so-called bear market. Um, and I think that is because it's, it's artists behind these projects. Um, so a lot of NFT projects, in my humble opinion, are filled with hot air and empty promises and can be a really vapid toxic culture in a lot of projects. And it's a shame that that 99% of the time is how people enter the NFT space. Whereas the music scene cultivates um, like authenticity, it cultivates like supporting artists, um, connection is first and foremost with the, the performer, the collector, you become like one family. So we've been extremely resilient through the market. Um, collectors are still making wins with our music which that's what is so radical for me is to see not just people supporting me because they love what I'm doing but they're also winning as I grow which is a, a new concept for artists I think. Can you go into more detail uh, the benefits and the advantages that it gives creators like yourself? Yeah I mean you're you're cutting out the middleman basically so I turn up as myself I have directly hired um, my own developer to create my own smart contracts. So as an artist, you're able to build your own leverage within the space. Whereas in traditional markets where you're relying on streaming platforms like Spotify, that's completely, to use a Web3 phrase, token gated. Like yeah. you don't have access to that data. So I can't reach out to my listeners on Spotify because I don't know who they are. So coming into the Web3 space, although it doesn't technically need the blockchain technology to have that connection, because we're using another Web2 platform like Twitter or Discord or these other places, it's the culture that's been established here of this like revolution that we're all part of at the moment. Um, and yeah, that's that's kind of the, the, main, the, the main thing for me. Okay, I love that. And so what are you doing here today at the Blockdown Festival? So I am here performing. I performed yesterday in the scorching heat. As I said, I'm from Scotland, so I'm like slightly dying, but loving it at the same time. Uh, so I performed a solo set yesterday, um, have made some like lovely new friends, new connections, new collectors actually from performing. And today I spoke on a panel 
um, trying to, to bring people to the light. I've been joking like come to the dark side music NFTs, but really it's like coming to the light. And I like that, I like that. It's more wholesome over here. So um, yeah, I've just been having a great time. It's like a, a working holiday for me at the moment, yeah. What were the main points of your talk up on stage? Again, it was, it was talking about um, how artists have been given these opportunities but also collectors like I think I think fans of music are actually looking for ways to support and it's just not available um, unless you launch a Kickstarter or you launch something and even with that concept um, the ban is giving in order to support the artists where this is more of a mutual exchange so we're kind of talking about that relationship of um, hopefully you're both making wins and growing in the space together um, and yeah, build that leverage as, a, as an independent artist. All right, I love that. Well, good luck today and good luck in future endeavors. <laughs> it's great talking to you. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, guys.